In this video, we're going to reveal the pros and cons of freezing your metadata, what that even means, and exactly how to do it. And more importantly, will NFTs in the metaverse be called meta metadata? I'm also going to explain why failure to understand this key concept is only going to increase your likelihood of getting rugged somewhere down the line. So strap in and listen up. So according to the official ERC 721 metadata standard, this information consists of the item name, the description, the media type, JPEG, PNG, etc., and also custom properties like levels, stats, and other attributes. And because OpenSea uses a standard smart contract, we can use the token ID associated with our NFT to run queries against the smart contract to reveal more details about our NFT. So this is an NFT that I minted myself. And if I wanted to get the metadata for this NFT, I could do that. So I'm just coming over to details and you do that by pulling the token ID and running one of the methods of the contract. So I just click the contract. Now the contracts are for OpenSea, they're gonna be standard. OpenSea um, maintains those contracts. But what we can do is use the functions of the contract. So if I go to read, so basically there are standard functions that you can actually query against. So there should be one called token, I think. Let's see here. Uh, sorry, no, it's called URI. So if you plug in the token ID and query, it gives you back this URL here. And basically, this URL just shows you how to get your metadata. So um, you just append the token ID at the end. So I'm just gonna come back over here, grab the token ID and then just append it. And this just made a get request to the OpenSea API. And you can see the only metadata I have is a name, Mr. Whittles, and the image itself is stored right on Google. You can see here that the metadata itself is stored on OpenSea servers and the image is stored on Google servers. And this actually creates two points of failure because now if OpenSea has issues, your NFT doesn't render. And if Google returns an incorrect image, your NFT doesn't render. This is the problem with centralized servers. So in many ways, everything that's actually interesting about your NFT, the name, the description, the image, is actually just stored on third-party servers and not not actually on the blockchain. And that actually creates a massive problem because nothing related to your NFT is actually stored on the blockchain. The blockchain is only going to show the token ID, the transaction ID, and the wallet addresses that show receipts of ownership. In fact, most people don't even know that when you mint an NFT on OpenSea, a token ID is created, but nothing actually touches the blockchain. This is called lazy minting. Lazy because they're not actually doing anything until a transaction arises. So, see, this is a NFT that I quote unquote minted. Although, because OpenSea does lazy minting, it's actually not on the blockchain. Therefore, you can still edit it. But even when you do move the asset by gifting it or selling it, the only information that gets on the chain is the transaction ID, the token ID, and the to and from wallet addresses. And although this does serve as an immutable trace of ownership, it says nothing about what's being owned. And this is where the concept of freezing metadata starts to make more sense. Real quick, there is no gas limit on expressing your gratitude. So go ahead and hit that like button so we can evangelize the good word of Web3 and crypto. So according to the OpenSea official website, freezing metadata is the process of storing your data on a decentralized file storage. And this can be achieved by electing to freeze our metadata while in the process of minting our NFT. And when we do this, instead of storing our data on centralized servers, aka OpenSea servers, the data is going to be stored on a decentralized file storage called the Interplanetary File Storage, or IPFS for short. I'm going to spare you a full definition of decentralized file storage, but suffice to say that it is immutable and it inherits a lot of the same properties as blockchains because it 
it incorporates Web3 principles. When NFTs on OpenSea have frozen metadata, you will see a snowflake in the Explorer. And if you click into the details, you can actually click a link that will send you directly to IPFS where you can view that metadata. So this is an example of an NFT that someone sent to me where the um, metadata has been frozen. This item's metadata was permanently locked. And what's cool is you can actually click this. And similar to how we queried the token on Polyscan using the smart contract, we're querying the CID, which is kind of like how um, IPFS identifies resources to get the metadata off of IPFS. And you have to use a gateway, a service for that. So we're using Pinata. But this string here is the metadata and it's stored on IPFS. But as you can see, the image itself is also stored on IPFS. And so this is using the Cloudflare gateway to access IPFS to pull an image. And as you can see in this example, both the metadata and the image itself are stored on IPFS. So given this information, why might we want to freeze our metadata? In my mind, the primary reason is if we don't freeze the metadata, then our asset is not truly permanent. This means that if OpenSea goes away or changes the metadata, then the name of our NFT and even the image itself are subject to change. But not all NFTs are images and sometimes projects assume that the name and the image are subject to change over time. And that might be an example of where you want to keep the metadata fluid so that it could incorporate changes in the future. And just to give you some examples of how some bigger projects have chosen to implement, the now famous Bored Ape Yacht Club stores its metadata on IPFS, and Uniswap stores its market-making protocol actually on the chain directly. And finally, how do we freeze our NFT's metadata in OpenSea? Uh, we can just come over to our collections, we can pull our NFT. You can also do this during the minting process. And we're going to just click edit. And then if we come down to freeze metadata, we can enable this and then we can click the freeze button. Okay, so we just froze the metadata for our no code NFT. And you can see there's a transaction hash because now it's on the blockchain. This wasn't on the blockchain before. Okay, and now we can see that the metadata has been frozen. And we can click that and we can see that um, the metadata is stored on IPFS. We can also see that our image should be stored on IPFS. How cool is that? If you like this video, then you're going to love my tutorial on how to create, transfer, and sell NFTs on OpenSea. And you can check that out right here. Thanks.